my name is Buzz Clute, and my friend Stuart Lundy wanted me to make a video about the construction of a Vortex brewer. We have a 7 gallon brewer and a 35 gallon brewer. This one is already set up. Uh, when I received this conical vessel it actually had a top on it with, um, with a cover and uh, if you look closely you would be able to see that I use a sawzall, cut this in and I used a, um, a drill with a, with a hole maker to make this hole and that allows the flexible hose to go in here. Now in retrospect that was a mistake because I lost capacity, Stuart pointed that out to me and if I did that again or in the next version I actually don't make a hole here I leave part of the roof on. What I wanted to do was just put this together for you just to show you quite how simple it is. Um, so really we're going to screw this nipple into this threaded bottom over here. Uh, that's basically all it is. I would put more of this plumber's tape on just to make sure it's waterproof. And then I'm going to take my hose and drop it in on here. So that can be a little bit, uh, for an old like guy like me, it takes a little bit of extra effort. But you want to make sure that this hose really fits well onto the barb. Okay, so now we've got the flexible hose and the conically shaped vessel. Uh, it's pretty much ready to go. I'm going to put it in onto the, um, under the frame. Okay, um, I just rearranged this so that we have a small anti-clockwise twist. This is a 90 degree bend I bought, PVC piping, um, and I just cut it off to make it a 45 degree angle. And I drilled a little flute hole in here, and this is where we want to put the air pipe in, and, and that's kind of the next part of it. So all I'm going to do is fit it in here. Now I want to take my compressor tube and put the air tube down this hole and I'm going to feed it down into the flexible pipe. The air is going to come from the compressor down this hole and I'm going to feed this down. Notice that there's a little bit of friction uh, on this thing. It's because if you don't have a little bit of friction, that air pipe is going to come out pretty quickly, especially if you're doing a 24 hour brew. So now we've got that together, let's uh, go ahead and fill this little thing up. Well, one of the things that Stuart suggested was to get this flexible hose because it makes it eminently practical. You can fill things up really quickly. So I'm going to fill from this big bad boy here to this little guy. So it really fills up very, very rapidly. And I always have to worry that it, you know, make sure that it doesn't fill up too quickly. Okay, so basically now we have the setup where uh, the compressor is ready to pump. Uh, the, the most important thing here is that we're going to create an airlift. So the airlift, it's an airlift pump. So the idea of the airlift is that you're going to be able to circulate the water through here simply by using the compressed air from the compressed air compressor. And the principle is that the water in the leg, uh, the rising leg of this uh, flexible hose, uh, the, the column of water there is going to be filled with bubbles. And so there's going to be less water, therefore less static pressure. Um, the pressure inside this vessel is going to be more and that's going to create a, um, a, a circulation of uh, water. Uh, and then there's a little bit of magic that happens is that you're going to see a vortex going on. So here we go. Okay, so what you can see is that water is coming out of this flexible hose simply because I've got bubbles in the rising leg. So that's the beginning of my airlift. And of course the airlift is important because if I'm doing a compost tea, I don't want that compost or any of those microbes to be damaged. So this does, num number one, it circulates water, 
Number two, it aerates things. And in my case, uh, where I'm on city water, it also removes the chlorine. So in this case, you get a vortex forming really, really quickly. And part of that was just helped by this 45 degree bend. But had I designed this a little bit smarter, I would have had the hose coming in on top rather than in on the side because this gives me about six gallons instead of seven gallons. What I really like about the system now is that um, you can add things and it mixes really, really well. So we're going to take some of the seaweed and put it in and I want you to see what happens. Okay, we're going to do the same with some Johnson Sioux compost that I put through a quarter inch screen, about five millimeters. So it's pretty fine. I'm going to put some of this in. Okay. okay. So here we go. So one of the things I like about this is that if you make this uh, compost fine enough, I found that in this uh, six gallon tank, I can put a quart of material in and it doesn't clog up the system. I much prefer that to putting the compost in and keeping it in a bag because I think that might make it go anaerobic. So I can recover this uh, with a paint filter and I'll show you that uh, in a little while as well. All right, this bad boy over here, uh, I was very fortunate. My friend Jason Carter had one of these uh, in, his, uh, in his shed somewhere, and he very kindly loaned it to me. One of the important improvements that we made here, again, thanks to Stuart, is we, shave, we, we cut the, uh, the, the roof off of this thing. You can see where that top was. Uh, and then instead of taking everything off, I made a hole in here, that means we have all of these 35 gallons that we can use. So it's a great mixer, number one, but it's also good for compost tea. Um, obviously, the compressor is a little bit bigger, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, you can see uh, these compressors are quite different sizes. This one is probably slightly over-designed, and it's probably good enough for a 60 or 70 gallon tank, but uh, I wanted it slightly oversized. So this tank is about ready to go. Um, there is an important difference over here, is that you can see the, um, the pipe, the end of the flexible hose has no attachment, it goes directly in. So how are we getting the air down into the tube? Well, I tried something slightly different this time, um, and essentially I took the hose from the compressor and I stuck it down this way. So what you can also see here is I put a piece of copper hose that I will actually attach my ground to. So the copper hose, uh, if I got a really, uh, if I got a good size, um, I would have put the copper hose outside the flexible tu tubing. The flexible tubing just didn't fit in. So you want something rigid that goes down into the, um, into the flex hose. Um, so, uh, just one less moving part, I guess. Okay. All right, let's fire this bad boy up and see if we can get a nice vortex. Again, the principle is the same. It's just a slightly bigger machine. We're creating an airlift pump. Remember that that is what keeps the microbes from being crunched up by some kind of centrifugal or peristaltic pump. So there that beautiful vortex is beginning to form. We're ready now also to put our compost in. So this becomes a really effective mixer. I've put about a gallon of compost in these 35 gallons of water. 
uh, really that's kind of the approximate mix for a compost tea. I'm going to let it go for an hour. I think the shear forces and some of the turbulence basically remove the microbes from the uh, organic matter, from the solid organic matter. And I re can recover the organic matter with this paint filter, which is about 400 microns. And I want to do that before I leave it overnight. So this is basically what I do. So I'm going to take this out. Whoops. I'm not going to do this too much longer. <laughs> but you can see it's very easy to recover that compost. So it means that we have a way of making something that doesn't have anything uh, greater than 400 microns in the compost. All right, and, and one last thing that is really important over here is that you do want to have a ground. I didn't put a ground in here. I've got a ground at uh, the office and uh, I've become more and more aware at how electricity is more important uh, in soils and agriculture, but also in making compost. Again, you can ask Stuart Lundy why he wants to put a ground in and he can explain that better than I can. So I appreciate your time watching this. I hope that this helps you uh, get a, a do-it-yourself vortex brewer going in your own operation.